Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Mr. Anonymous, but he didn't give me a specific topic, so I want to cover an article that someone recently sent me called 33 Ways Your Boyfriend Is Micro-Cheating and Totally Getting Away With It. If mansplaining, mansitting, and now man-hugging weren't enough, the latest made-up microaggression is now micro-cheating, according to the Muffington Post. So I'm going to break down as many of these 33 points as possible. So let me get started with the first one, which is a guy just reaching out to a woman that's just a friend for advice on something he can easily look up on Google, because he wants to banter to someone. The reason his girlfriend might think this is bad is because women often use men as emotional tampons all the time, and a woman hears her boyfriend talk to an old female friend, and it's no big secret, it's easy for her to think that he has some toxic emotions that he wants to dump on someone else. But on the other hand, to the woman that he's talking to, he often plays the part of the beta male orbiter. The problem is this type of behavior makes his girlfriend jealous and feel insecure, and she might be subconsciously afraid that if he's talking to someone else and giving her attention, then that woman has potentially friend-zoned him and could also exploit his utility value at a loss to the girlfriend. The second point is giving a waitress or bartender an obscenely large tip simply because she's hot. It used to be that looking at a hot waitress or other women while you were on a date was enough to get you into trouble. Now all you have to do is give an attractive woman a larger than average tip and this gives your girlfriend a reason to hate you or even dump you. The reason that might offend a woman is because it means another woman is getting access to resources that she feels entitled to. The third point is if a guy is actually following a ton of hot girls on social media and monitors their posts closely. If a guy is following a ton of hot girls that are more attractive than you and it triggers you, then you simply have issues with your self-esteem. The fourth point is sending a blatantly provocative article about sex or porn with regards to the porn industry to a woman that's not your girlfriend. This point is absolutely ridiculous because who does something like that? I think this is just part of the writer's paranoia. The fifth point is putting a girl into his contacts folder on his phone under a code name to avoid being identified when she calls or texts. This point isn't micro-cheating and actually sets up a situation where the guy's potentially cheating. The sixth point is tagging a girl in an Instagram and where the two of you have an inside joke. I guess from now on, having inside jokes with people of the opposite sex is considered micro-cheating. Once again, I'm not even going to comment on how stupid that is. The seventh point is a guy obsessively checking another woman's Facebook posts and getting excited more than his significant others. First of all, how many guys get excited to check a woman's Facebook post, let alone Facebook itself? You have to be a royal mangina to feel that way. Secondly, even if he did that, why would he actually get excited about it around his girlfriend? This guy is either a complete moron or he's looking for a fight. I don't see this as very realistic at all. Number eight is a guy venting to another woman that isn't his girlfriend that's emotional. This is the same point I made earlier about a guy making a woman his emotional tampon. This simply doesn't happen very often. Usually it's the woman using the boyfriend to vent about something else. But because of female-owned group preference, criticizing the other woman is socially unacceptable, so a woman criticizes a man instead. Number nine is if a guy tells a woman he recently ran into that she looks amazing or is doing really well. So the level of that man's compliments have to be monitored. If he's too complimentary, then that's apparently a bad thing. Once again, this is about a woman's insecurities kicking in because she would rather have that compliment instead of him wasting it on another woman. Point number 10 is if a guy purposely doesn't mention his significant other it, with regards to his friends and work colleagues so they think that he's single. So let me ask everyone this. How does a woman know that her boyfriend intentionally doesn't mention his significant other? What if it just doesn't come up if he's single or not during the course of the conversation? It would be very hard for a woman to find out that the guy intentionally wasn't bringing her up. I didn't realize that it was mandatory now to tell everyone that you know that you're in a relationship. This just shows me that the woman writing this is very insecure about losing her boyfriend if she even has one in the first place. Point number 11 is diminishing the relationship by saying that it's not that serious even though he's cohabitating and possibly engaged. The reason a woman would be upset about this is because this is what women do all the time. They don't mention that they're in relationships because they're always looking for the bigger, better deal. Because they want a monkey branch to someone else. So when their boyfriend is not mentioning his relationship to anyone, they often get worried that he's going to try to monkey branch too. The twelfth point is a guy denying he's in a relationship when he's actually flirting with a girl. This corroborates my argument from the previous point. Number 13 is a guy closing his eyes and daydreaming about a girl that he has a crush on. The author of this article, Melanie, doesn't seem to mention when this type of daydreaming is actually happening. And I suspect that it's going on when they're having sex and he closes his eyes and fantasizes about another woman. Apparently that's now also considered micro-cheating. If it is, then women are certainly guilty of it as well. The 14th point is, if something good happens to him and he chooses to share the good news with another woman. The crazy thing about this is that the other woman could actually be his mother if he actually got a new job. I often remember how my mother would get crazy when my father would tell everything to my grandmother, but not to my mother. 
Again, this comes down to jealous rage. Number 15 is if a guy reaches out to an ex-girlfriend on a day that is significant for both of them, like a former anniversary. First of all, most guys can barely remember their anniversaries, so if they do reach out on that specific day, it must be a coincidence. Also, every woman knows that the only reason your boyfriend is going to be talking to his ex is because the odds are high that he was the one that did the dumping with regards to her. So once again, the new girlfriend is worried that he's going to try to monkey branch back. Number 16 is, if a guy does something nice for a girl that's not his girlfriend, like hooking her up with concert tickets or tickets to a different type of event. But who does such things? Why would a guy that's in a relationship and in love want to go out and start doing favors for other women that aren't his girlfriend? He wouldn't unless he's an alpha player and he has the option to do so. That's probably the type of boyfriend that Melanie once had or she couldn't keep because they dumped their previous girlfriends and such guys have sexual mobility. They can wander from woman to woman and she probably has experience with this, so that's why she's writing the 33 ways your boyfriend is micro-cheating because she needs to vent about the stuff that goes on in her life. And she wants to use the readers of the Muffington Post as an emotional tampon. The 17th through to the 24th point is where the boyfriend is doing nice things for some other woman that could actually be done instead for his girlfriend. The way I see it, this is an attempt to brand micro-cheating as an attempt by women, or more specifically, to put a label on what I actually call emotional cheating, where you cheat on your partner by having an emotional affair, where you're building up a non-sexual relationship with someone else while you're still with your partner sexually. This is probably one of the main reasons that women monkey branch from one man to another. They won't just sleep with the man and get together with them, but first, she actually will try to build up a so-called emotional bond. The majority of these so-called micro-cheating points mentioned are there to bring up an emotional connection. It's not so much that women like Melanie don't trust the men that they're with for with regards to something as stupid as micro-cheating, but who they really don't trust are the women that are actually trying to take their men away. Instead of upping their game and making themselves look better, or possibly working on themselves, they instead make the man look bad for his own behavior. They don't seem to want to point to the fact that it's not just the man supposedly micro-cheating, but it's also in many cases the other women and he's talking to doing it as well. Micro-cheating is a non-issue for alpha guys that the majority of women want. Women also fear that men are going to adopt the same types of strategies for monkey branching that they employ, so they want to classify it as micro-cheating. But of course, if you catch them doing that, then they'll just put a devilish smile on their face and say, who me, no way, I'm not up to anything evil. With most women, it's do as I say and not as I do. The way I see it, micro-cheating is all about exposing a can of whoop-ass onto her boyfriend. And for no reason, or for an incredibly unvalid reason, which is that he's actually a good guy, so other women want to take him away from her. It's stupid microaggressions like this that are causing us all kinds of problems. Women have most of the rights and privileges, so at this point getting anything from the man is becoming increasingly difficult, like squeezing blood from a stone. So male behaviors have to be regulated and controlled even more stringently, using complicated rituals and rules that only women seem to remember. But if a guy goes his own way, then suddenly all these rules are completely gone. But I want to go through a few more of those 33 ways that a boyfriend is micro-cheating before I finally finish this video, and some of them are absolutely insane. Number 25 is recommending that his girlfriend wear a certain type of clothing because he wants her to look like a crush. To that, all I have to say is how on earth is a woman supposed to know if her guy is wearing a shirt that his ex-girlfriend gave him? Is she going to force him to throw out anything that reminds her of her ex-lover, his clothing, furniture, etc.? Number 32 is also interesting because it talks about a man spending all of his time engrossed in a conversation with another woman at a party, even though he actually brought his girlfriend there. By that standard, every single girlfriend that I've ever had was micro-cheating. Sometimes they'd fixate on one or two guys in the crowd and they would often spend the rest of the night talking to them and I would go around and speak to different people as well. I didn't really care, but for all I knew, they could have actually been eyeing those guys, trying to monkey branch to them, and I had zero idea. I'll spare everyone the rest of the small details and if you want to know more, you can actually check out the article for yourself, but like I said earlier, it just sounds like a complicated ramble about women trying to control or police male behavior. I'd say that about three or four points are valid, but for the most part, this piece is a more of a reflection on female nature. All of the things I mentioned that Melanie wrote about should actually be seen as a possibility for women to do the men in a relationship as well. But you have to keep in mind that those are not technically things that would be considered cheating. You're not making out with another person. You're not even sleeping with them. All you're doing is building a relationship outside of those things, and like I said, women do that to men all the time. It's perfectly acceptable for them to do it to you, but suddenly we're supposed to believe that according to the Muffington Post, it's only men that are doing micro-cheating. 
Why is this article only badmouthing men and not discussing the fact that women also exhibit these same types of behaviors? Are we really to believe that it's acceptable to have a double standard here? I think that's what writers like Melanie are trying to establish, that micro-cheating is only something that men can do to women, and not the other way around. This article is just another exercise in attempting to control male behavior. A guy hasn't cheated on his girlfriend yet, but he's already being treated like he has. How is that even fair? That's like a guy buying a gun that hasn't been used yet, and people are already calling him a micro-murderer. Micro-cheating is nothing more than a woman's obsession with emotional safety and trying to get the last bit of utility for men in our society. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Mr. Anonymous, for your donation, and I really hope you enjoyed this topic. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW mystery link, and also like this video. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the Muffington Post away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.